In this video, we're gonna talk about what the fourth year of medical school actually looks like. But first, we're gonna have to do a little road trip from Denver, Colorado to Rochester, Minnesota at night. This is, this is some, some classic fourth year med student stuff. Oh, and, and also with, with a baby. We'll see how it goes. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready, Kari? Yeah. It's 2 a.m. dude, and you're up. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, 2.42 in the morning, we're in Nebraska. Uh, we're making it. What's the fourth year of med school like? So I started my fourth year of medical school. This is after finishing my step two exam, by beginning my sub eyes, my sub internships, which are four week rotations in the specialty that you're gonna be going into. So for me, that's orthopedic surgery and almost all fourth year medical students will do this at their home institution. And then I did an away rotation, which is again a sub internship now at a different institution, another four weeks. And I did that at Duke. And I came home, did another four week rotation. This was just emergency medicine, a graduation requirement. Then I went left into the, my last away rotation, another four week sub internship at Hospital for Special Surgery in New York City. So I basically did three sub eyes, one at home and two away, as well as my emergency medicine rotation. So going back and forth from Rochester to North Carolina to New York City and back in Rochester going all over the place, completing rotations specific to the specialty that I'm going into. We made it. We made it. So I'm home now. Uh, we just got home and unfortunately, within 60 seconds of getting home, Kari, vomited in his car seat. So I'm still in the garage cleaning out the car seats. Madison is taking care of Kari, making sure that he's all right. I think it was a little bit of maybe snacking and then getting a little motion sick with being in the car, so. But I thought that this would be a good time to at least briefly chat a little bit about how to schedule your fourth year of medical school because I've definitely learned some things and I think that I actually did it, did it the right way in hindsight looking back. So the way that I scheduled my fourth year of medical school is I basically wanted to front load all of my requirements, knowing that I'm still in the mode of clerkships, I'm still kind of good to go, ready to go. I'm gonna be good at the beginning and then towards the end when senioritis kicks in, I will not have that many more requirements left. That was the intention. So I scheduled all of my sub internships, which count for elective credit at most schools um, and all of the other requirements that are in the fourth year of medical school which traditionally are things like emergency medicine sometimes or other um, clerkships can actually be kicked to the fourth year if you didn't finish them during your third um, and they schools have different elective requirements so weeks doing other kind of things usually sub ice counts so that's why it's nice to do away rotations but i front loaded that so i was basically ridiculously busy from about may to like the end of September. All right guys, this is gross. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop torturing you with this. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about what these sub eyes or sub internships are. These are essentially month long interviews where you are rotating either at your home program or that away program and trying to demonstrate that you can function at the level of an intern and basically trying to demonstrate that you can just work your tail off. So these are probably the most work intensive months of medical school. 
um, especially if you're going into competitive specialties like the surgical specialties, ortho, plastics, neurosurgery. These are times where you are working 30 plus hour shifts, um, six to maybe seven days a week, um, and just really, really kind of grinding as hard as you can. So I know that a lot of talk about fourth year is vacation, no more in the hospital, hanging out. Let me tell you that that is not how the fourth year of medical school starts. The fourth year actually starts with probably the most busy, stressful, time intensive, work heavy part of medical school. So we'll talk a little bit more about the fun vacation stuff in a bit, but I, I need I need to lay down for at least at least 30 seconds or 30 hours. We'll see. We'll see. So Madison actually took over for cleaning up the car seat. So now we did a little switcheroo. And instead of me sleeping, I think we're gonna get some buckets, aren't we? Are we gonna get some buckets? Yeah. 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 Oh. 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 We are napped up. I feel a little more rested and ready to continue this video. Um, before we talk about arguably the most important part of fourth year, um, I wanted to share some super exciting news and that is my evolving student course. This is essentially a 30 day challenge that I'll be doing alongside everyone else in cohort one starting January 1st, where if you sign up, you will get a new video every single day for the entire month of January. It's 30 straight days of videos going over evidence-based study strategies, strategies to remain disciplined, motivated, inspired, organized, all of that kind of stuff. And we'll be working through a personalized template on Notion that you'll be able to use as your kind of personalized workspace. I'm so excited for this course. This is going, this is probably the most work I've ever put into a project. So I'm super stoked about it. If you're interested, check out the website and the link in the description below. I definitely recommend doing so quickly because we are limiting the amount of people that we're allowing in cohort one, but I'm super excited and cannot wait to complete this challenge with you guys. So back to the fourth year of medical school, um, after you've done your sub eyes or those sub internships, one of the most important things that medical students now have to basically round out their medical school career is interviews for residency in their specialty of choice. And so this is actually an experience that varies among specialties in terms of how they conduct their interviews. Um, I'm applying into orthopedic surgery. And so the way that orthopedic surgery conducts their interviews is that there's a universal interview offer day. And that is a day where all programs participating in this, which is 99% of orthopedic surgery programs, essentially will send interview invitations out on the exact same day at the exact same time. And so it is a time where you are constantly looking at your phone, waiting until that time to hit, and then anxiously refreshing your email, seeing what interviews that you have. And the other way that other specialties conduct interview invitations is just sending them out on a rolling basis. And so sending them out at different times and dates over the course of a month or so until they have sent out all of their interview invitations. Now the actual process of interviewing, again, the timeline for this varies among specialties. In orthopedics, for example, the vast majority of interviews take place in December and January. Other specialties are a little earlier and have interviews in even as early as October and November. And the last thing that, again, varies between specialties is whether or not these interviews are virtual or in person. In the case of orthopedic surgery, uh, more than half, at least in my case, are in person, but in other specialties, they are completely virtual. And so the trajectory of whether or not these will continue to be more virtual just in the aftermath of COVID, or if programs will start to integrate more and more in person interviews is probably gonna be specialty dependent. But this brings me to one of the key strategies of getting the most out of your fourth year of medical school. And that is to save as much money as possible because whether or not your interviews are in person or you're doing away rotations, these are expensive times. And you spend a lot of the time on a plane or in a car traveling and having to get hotels and all of these kind of things. And for the most part, you are responsible for covering these expenses and it can get very, very expensive. Using me as an example, I did two away rotations. So I spent two months away where I had to get plane tickets as well as actually paying for housing for the entire month. 
And in one of the programs, I also rented a car for the month. So that's expensive. And then I am also taking six in-person interviews where I also am responsible for covering the flights to all of these locations as well as the hotel for the majority of them. There are a couple who are gracious enough to actually provide the funding for the hotel stay, but they are a small minority in this case. So just from that, we have eight round trip flights and over two months of staying in hotels that you're responsible for paying for. And this doesn't even take into account the cost of attending medical conferences, which I'm going to two of this year. So the wallet hurts. The wallet, the wallet hurts, y'all. There are also some credit cards that have fantastic travel perks. And for me, I actually set up a Chase Sapphire account at the beginning of medical school, went through, used it basically for everything as I was transitioning. So we kind of racked it up and qualified for a pretty large bonus that now I am using to kind of pay for all of these flights and hotels. The other strategy that I felt to be super helpful is not having any electives or any courses or requirements that I have to do during the interview season. Interviews are busy enough, they're stressful enough, and not having to balance my responsibilities in other courses or other work has been super helpful. And if possible, I would even go as far as recommending trying to get as much of your requirements done before interview season starts so that by the end of the year and as senioritis kicks in, once you finish interviews, you can actually feel the relief of essentially being done with medical school which I am currently in the process of doing these interviews, but I know that after I am finished with these interviews and I don't really have any other requirements at all, it's gonna be a good time. We are gonna be in a good place. And finally, the last and most fun part of the fourth year of medical school is actual time off. This is probably the year where the, you have the most amount of time that's actually your own time and you have control over what you do with it. We've already been talking about all the travel that you kind of have to do with away rotations and interviews potentially. But this is also the time where if you have some points left over that you can actually take a vacation and enjoy family time and enjoy resting and recharging in preparation for residency. Madison and I are currently planning a big kind of post-match trip, um, debating whether or not we should go to Japan or maybe Italy. Let me know if you guys have preferences in the comments because I'm leaning one way and I'm interested to see which way you guys think. But it is extremely exciting and once you have gone through the stressful and busy nature that is medical school it is important to enjoy these seasons of relaxations and seasons of celebration so um, I definitely recommend students do that as well I know I'm gonna be doing that and I'll be sharing with you guys how that goes because I'm super excited for it but that essentially sums up the fourth year of medical school just to recap students take step two if they haven't already and then get into their sub internships or sub eyes where you can either do ones at home or ones away Students have a few electives that they have to complete that's school dependent. Oftentimes students will have one or two clerkships remaining. Usually emergency medicine is a common one that students take in their fourth year of medical school. Students then begin interviewing at residency programs, again, either virtual or in-person, depending on that specialty. And after all of that, then there is finally some downtime to get some much needed R&R, especially if you optimize your schedule. I actually purposely planned this video to represent what the fourth year of medical school looks like because we traveled, we enjoyed time with family, and looking at myself in the camera, I look tired. <laughs> and I think all three of those things are accurate representations of what the fourth year of medical school looks like. But I am so, so thankful for every one of you who have been supportive and encouraging throughout this process. Some of you guys have basically watched me go from starting medical school to basically finishing it. And this community has meant more than I can ever express. So I am truly grateful for the community, the friends, the family um, who have continued to support me um, along this journey. And I don't think that I would have made it without you guys. And I know I haven't been as active posting YouTube videos as frequently um, as I would have hoped but we've been busy as you can probably tell at this point. And I've also been spending quite a bit of time working on this course. So I think you guys are gonna, gonna like that. 30 videos is a lot, that's a lot, but it's gonna be worth it. But do also expect more YouTube videos to be coming here in the near future too. And as always, keep evolving and I'll see you guys in the next one.